guys, today I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on a 2013 and up Yamaha FJR 1300. Now these, are, these instructions are going to apply to virtually any bike out there. The differences bike to bike are simply going to be what procedure steps you need to get your bike ready and the location and size of fasteners. But in general, you have your drain plug, you have your filter, and you have the oil. And everything else, pretty much the same. Now, on the case of the Yamaha FJR, for 13 and up, they expose the oil filter. This used to be hidden behind a panel. So all we have to remove is one screw out of a panel. This is a four millimeter little faster in here, and I'll show it to you in a second when I actually take it off. And then we have the filter itself, which is a rather small unit, but it works. And we have the fill port here. So all we have to do is get our stuff ready. And if you're doing this for the first time yourself, which is very easy, by the way, don't be thinking that you need to go to the dealer to do your regular maintenance, especially for oil changes. It is a very, very simple task. Even easier than most cars because you don't have to have a lift, you don't have to get under the car, you don't have to jack anything up. Super easy. All we're going to need first is our oil. Now I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out what particular oil is best for your situation. I know that from tens of thousands of miles running this particular oil, it's called Rotella, it's made by Shell, it's a very good synthetic at a very decent price and it's available virtually everywhere. Walmart, most auto stores, very good bargain oil, but extremely high quality. Many people have been running that oil in these bikes for, I mean, decades, literally, since it's been out. Okay, it's great oil. You can certainly use Yamalube. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Yamalube oil. It is exceptionally high quality. Unfortunately, it is very pricey, especially if you have to get it at a physical dealer because there is significant dealer markup on lubricants. You can mail order it. You can certainly do that. The only thing I suggest is if you're going to be buying oil, don't buy it in bulk. Unless you have multiple bikes and you're going to be going through it a lot, don't buy it by the case because it does have a shelf life. Granted, it's pretty long, but you don't want to buy enough oil to last you five years. Okay, You want to buy your oil as fresh as you possibly can. So mine takes five quarts for a change, so I've got a gallon and a quart. That should be plenty. And uh, the rest I'm just going to keep for the next oil change. and. You know, buy another gallon, maybe it'll take half of this quart, I don't know, we'll see, but that's the book spec. You always want to fill it to whatever it takes, doesn't matter what the book says. If the book says five quarts and it takes four and a half, you only got four and a half out of it, that's fine, there's no problem with that. I always suggest people use disposable gloves when doing any kind of mechanical work, believe me, it saves a huge, huge mess. And yes, if you can't tell, it is extremely hot and humid today and our power is out. So keep a towel for yourself too, right? Whew, that goes a long way. All right, gloves keep your hands clean, keeps other things clean. If you need to run in the house or go to, part, go to the store for a part, whip these off, you don't get your steering wheel dirty, all right? This is like 12 bucks, lasts you for years, awesome. I've got one Allen key here for that panel bolt. You might need something different. Oil filter. Now, I'm using the Yamaha OEM filter for one reason only. It's black. It's plain black. It looks great on the bike. You can certainly go with an aftermarket filter. There are plenty of very good brands. And I'm not going to get into the debate of which brands are better than others. But they all aren't plain black. <laughs> And this bike scheme looks great. Now, if your oil filter is hidden behind stuff, you're not probably going to care. Go ahead and go get yourself a Mobile One. It's probably going to perform a little bit better. But I'm going to see logos and stuff. All right, so this is purely an aesthetic thing. These aren't that expensive. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going with the OEM filter. You're going to save a buck or two getting a third-party filter. And if looks are important to you, you know, that's just something to consider, that's all. So, using the OEM filter, and I'm using a new OEM crush washer. 
pretty much any bike out there, you either have to use a new crush washer or you do have the option of getting a reusable copper washer. You can get those at virtually any auto store. Just look in the oil section. As there's not really a big advantage to doing that. The point of this is to get a perfect seal when you cinch down the drain bolt every time. Now the crush washers do what they say. It has a little lip and when you tighten down that bolt it crushes and it forms a perfect seal to the mating surface. And then you take it off, you have to put a new one on. These are only a buck fifty, you know? Uh, every dealer stocks it. It's, when you get an oil change kit from a dealer you get the filter, oil if you want it, and a crush washer. I mean for a buck fifty. The reusable copper washers they might be two bucks. So what are you saving? 50 cents the first time and then a buck 50 every oil change? To me, just, I'm getting a crush washer. It guarantees me 100% perfect seal. Granted, I've never had a copper washer fail on me. I ran them on my last bike. I ran them on my last car. So, you know, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Do what you want. That's all I have to say about that. You're gonna need a funnel, and I suggest getting a long funnel. Not specifically for the oil, although it does come in a little handy. It totally clears the body panel here. But if you have a shaft drive, you also need a long funnel to get to that fill port. So just get one skinny long funnel, and you're good for whatever you have to do on the bike. Now because this is a very small filter, I went with one of these multi-size metal spring-loaded wrenches or adapters and this barely fits it this is a 65 mil filter and pretty much every adapter wrench anything you see out there goes to 64 and up so this is just barely small enough to fit the filter but that's good enough if you're gonna get one of these don't get a plastic get a metal only your bike may have a different position of the filter and you might be able to use just a regular strap wrench. Those work great too. I think the strap wrench is probably the very best way to get it off, but there's absolutely no way to get in here. This is flush with the uh, transmission and it's underneath the engine block, so I can't do anything that requires side grabbing of this at all. Um, likewise, I can't use the oil filter pliers, which I think generally suck. I've gone through multiple pairs of those. A lot of them are just cheap junk made in China and the, the hinge bolt wears and then they don't clamp right. Stay away from those unless you need one in a pinch. I mean they're cheap but they don't work worth a crap. These are great and generally you don't have to replace them. They, they work on big ones for cars. The only things they don't work on are large truck size filters but they sell a larger adapter to fit that kind of stuff. And the way it's used is it simply goes on a ratchet. I have a little extension here just so I can clear some of the body work and it just snaps in and you can twist your filter off. You never use a tool for putting a filter back on. You only hand tighten filters. I'll go through that when I do it. And two more things. One, you obviously need your drain pan. What size drain pan depends on your bike. I have plenty of clearance here and I just didn't take my own advice. I forgot to put the gloves on before I touch stuff, and now I have an oily hand. Well, I'll fix that in a minute. But I've got plenty of clearance, so I can fit a normal car drain pin in here, no problem. I have a center stand. The bike must be level. Absolutely has to be level. If you have a center stand, that's what it's for. If you have a sport bike, you're going to need some axle stands. You cannot do this on the side stand. The engine is tilted, the oil does not drain, or more importantly, fill correctly. You cannot do the service without it perfectly level. If you have a cruiser, get yourself a lift. They're not that expensive. I got one, uh, last time I got it at the auto store, I think it was 25 bucks for the Weiss Harley. Simple, all right? So the last thing, and this is specifically for my bike, is a little piece of aluminum foil. And that is simply to prevent all the mess. Because what I'm gonna do is just wrap it around this little part of fairing here once I take this bolt out. It just swings out so the oil can drop straight down and I just wrap it in foil. So the oil goes over the foil into the pan, nothing touches the bike, zero cleanup. Awesome. All right, let's get started. First thing we have to do is drain the oil and before you do that, you have to warm up the bike. Just 
Two to three minutes of idling is all. You don't want to ever do this on a hot bike. If you just came back for a ride, let it sit for a couple hours. It needs to be just warm, just so the oil gets a little more liquid so it can drain properly from all the nooks and crannies. Basically, if you have a fuel-injected bike, just start it, don't hit the throttle. When the idle drops down, you're nice and warm. Turn it off, you're done. If you have carbureted, if you have a carbureted engine, just let it idle for a couple minutes. Don't touch the throttle, don't rev it. Just let it idle, shut it down after a couple minutes, and you're good to go, okay? It's not hot enough where you can't work on it. Oil's nice and warmed up and it's gonna flow. That's all you need. So the first thing I'm gonna do, after I wipe my hands off, is drain the oil out of here. I'm gonna take the panel off, or rather take the screw out, and just bend the panel back. Now the previous gen bikes, it was a similar procedure with the panel, but as I remember, I had to do two or three fasteners to basically do the same thing. So I'm gonna take the camera down and show you that fastener right now. So here's the one body fastener that we wanna take out. And this on my bike is a four mil. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out and we'll get some clearance here. So with that fastener out, what we can do is bend this out of the way. I'm going to wrap this end in foil and you can see now the oil can drip from that filter straight down. It's not going to make a huge mess because we're going to get most of it out of the drain plug. But this just ensures when I take that filter off, anything that drips down the side there doesn't get on the paint and there's zero cleanup on the bike itself. Now, the drain plug is right down there in the bottom left. So we're going to wrap this, we're going to put this underneath, and then we're going to take out that drain plug. So in my case, my drain bolt is a 17 mil, and oftentimes, as is the case here with mine, from the factory, these are obnoxiously tight. So you may need a breaker bar. What I'm using here is an old torque wrench that's out of calibration and I just use it as a breaker bar. You can use a long extension. You can put a closed box end wrench on the end of this and use it as an extra lever. Whatever you need to do. I'm just going to start to loosen this because it doesn't fit under the pan obviously. And then as soon as I can turn it by hand I will, let's see which way, yep, go that way. As soon as I start to loosen it, and I can turn it by hand, I'm going to slide the pan under and then finish it off. As I was saying, it shouldn't be that big of a deal with the extension. If it stays on the bolt, that is. No, oh, and that came off because it loosened. So now, take it out by hand. Notice I have not yet taken out the fill plug because I don't want it to glug, glug, glug all over my hand as I take this out. I want to start it slow so I can get out of the way. There we go. Nice and warm, but not hot. So now we take out the fill plug so it can fully drain. And I like to wait until this really slows down before I do the filter, just again to minimize the mess. I got some paper towel here, I'm gonna set this down. And I'm gonna change this glove. Another benefit of having gloves. The only drawback to them, man, do I sweat inside them. Ugh. And it makes it impossible to put on a new pair. So you gotta dry off your hands. They do make some with powder inside, and I'm gonna grab a box of those next time. Those look pretty cool. Now I'm not allergic to anything, but if you have a latex allergy, uh, they make latex-free, I think these are even latex-free, nitrile. Yeah, they are. And that may be why they don't work so well with sweaty hands. But I do love them. Whenever I do any kind of work on the cars or anything, you, you invariably get dirty. And here I am filming a video, so I gotta touch the camera and everything. I don't wanna get that any dirtier than necessary. 
See, this is what I'm talking about. It's just it doesn't slide over wet skin at all. <laughs> you got to be careful because if you pull this too much, they do break. They're you know pretty much like balloons. I always end up with a little air at the fingertips, which can be a little annoying. So there we got the oil just about petered out. So now we're going to use the filter adapter. And where did my extension go? There it is. All right. So again, these just clip in. Bada bing, bada boom. Got my protector here. This just slips on over one of the flat spots. Just extend it a little bit. I'm going to do that first. Taking our filter off here. Uh, got it loose. Should be able to get the rest by hand. There we go. Now I'm just going to thin this back a bit. I have a little bit dripping out. No mess. Tip the filter up on its end. As you take it out, there's a little bit more that pours out. Set that down here in my paper towel. Let the rest come out of there. It's going to take another minute or so. And we'll be ready to do just a little wipe up clean work here and top it back off. Okay, there we go. Got the oil finally petering out of the filter spout there. Now we can go ahead and put on our new one. I've got the old one drained out here in the pan. And of course, properly dispose of all your materials. With the new filter, the you know, only two important things are don't get the surface dirty. On the OEMs here, they've got this nice plastic protective wrap. And what you want to do is just lightly coat this with new oil. Oh, this is hard to get off with gloves. Here we go. So we're just going to lightly coat this rubber ring here with new oil before we put it on. And you only hand tighten these. All right, You don't have to crank it down. You never use a tool when installing a new oil filter. Absolutely no need for that. Where did my oil go? Here it is. Now I'm going to be refilling. Oh, that's odd. Um, hmm. This appears to have been a previously opened bottle that I didn't notice from the store. And I'm going to bet some jackass bought this and put his dirty oil back in and then return it to the store. There's only one way to find out. Let's look at the oil. This is probably going to prompt a return to the store. Hmm, nope. It's new oil. I have no idea why this was open though. It looks pretty full. Ugh. Uh, it is about a quarter quart shy, so it looks like some jackass used some of the oil. Well, that's wonderful. We'll see how full it gets here. And I'll go back to the store if I have to. But anyway, putting on the filter, that's all you have to do there. And then we're going to hand tighten it back onto the bike. take this glove off to do this because I had the oil on it there and just hand snug it there we go all right that's back on new glove Now we can move the pan out of the way and put the drain bolt back in with a new crush washer. Eh, you know what? I'm just too sweaty for these gloves right now. That's all right. Dirty part's over. Now, with the bolt, the only important thing is 
you make sure that you have the crush washer off. Normally it's going to stick to the bolt, like here, so we need to remove it. Now we can put on our new crush washer. So now we can pull our pan out of the way. Quickly thread in our new bolt and washer. And tighten this back down. I like to do these to about 16 foot pounds, real good and tight. As long as the engine is cold, you do not ever want to snug this down when the engine is warm because that torque spec will be inaccurate. Here's my socket. I was looking for that. Where'd it go? There it is. Now I have done thousands and thousands and thousands of bolts to torque spec. And before you get there on this, you're going to feel the crush washer crushing. That's what I'm feeling right now. And now it's flattened and tight. If you aren't a real accurate gauge of torque, use a torque wrench. All right, but I have done thousands and thousands of these things. I'm real good with judging how much torque I'm putting on a bolt. So now, I'm gonna grab that paper towel again. Let me take the foil off. Wipe down the little bit of engine that had oil on it. Now under here, there is the vent slash drain from the tank. Make sure you put that on the right side, the upper side of this body fastener. And that can go back in. Just snug this up a little bit. Hardly anything on this. Tiny, tiny little bolt. There we go. Okay, now to fill our oil, we have down here a sight glass. And as you put the oil in, you're going to get right near the end and you're going to see the liquid oil in there. You got two little dots, a high and a low. You want it pretty much right in the center or a little bit high. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the whole gallon or what's left of it after somebody took some. Put it in, then I'm going to put in half of that remaining quart, then I'm going to start the engine, let it circulate, shut it off, take my level, and I'm going to top it off until I get to the proper point. So now we get our funnel, in goes the new oil, Open up the new quart. Oh, look at that, a sealed cap. You know, I've never ever thought to even look at that when buying oil. It's never happened to me before. Of course it happens on camera. <laughs> so looking at the sight glass here. All right, it's in the sight glass now. It's at the high point, but it's not really topped off. So what I'm gonna do is take this out. Set it down on my paper towel so it doesn't get the end dirty. Put my cap back in for a moment. Start it up just for five, 10 seconds. Get the oil circulating. Still has to fill up the new filter, don't, don't forget. I mean, that's uh, a real big chunk of this quart we're gonna put in. So it's gotta fill that up. I want it to circulate a little bit. Then we will take another reading. So let me start the bike. Now that it's pumped into the filter a bit, let's take another look at the sight glass here. 
and it's gone. <laughs> That's what we expected. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in the first half of this quart. I suspect it's going to take all of it at this point. I'll probably have to get some more from the store. Just because I was missing some from that gallon. I think I was missing more than I would have extra in this quart. Looking at the sight glass here, we've got some liquid back in it. Let that drain out of the funnel. Okay, start it up one more time. Check it again. Check the sight glass. And we're actually good. It took just about this whole extra quart. So I lucked out there. It is right between the halfway point and the high point. So that's good. I'll check it again after my first ride, just in case this didn't completely fill up the filter. But I do have plenty left for whatever else I need to top it off with. But there you go. Snug up your fill cap here just by hand, wipe up any mess that you might have made, dispose of your oil, and you're good to go. Super easy. If I wasn't making a video doing this, this is literally a 10 minute process. Don't ever be scared about changing your own bike oil. It is really, really simple. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.